Good morning, Alexandra. Good morning, John Christmas. Nice to meet you. My name is Alexandra Chudinova. I'm the founder of the Foundation for Academics. And today we are talking about um, important questions about higher education with John Christmas. So please, John, could you introduce yourself? My name is John Christmas. I'm a former banker and I'm co-author of this novel, KGB Banker, which is a fictionalization of a true story that I went through, which uh, involved banking and involved a big scandal that touched a lot of countries. Um, but anyway, I, I was educated in the United States. I, I grew up in Illinois, but then I moved to New Hampshire and I got my bachelor's degree at Dartmouth College. And then I moved to New York State and I got my master's degree at Cornell University. So both of those are Ivy Leagues. So I, I believe that that's what you wanted to talk about this morning. Yes, uh, thank you very much for your full description. It was actually my first question about your first education. So let's uh, move to the next question. What is your motivation and purpose to apply for a master's degree program at Cornell University? Well, at the time, I wasn't thinking so much about uh, developing my career as a writer. I was thinking more about business and to rise to the highest levels in uh, business in the United States, I thought it was good to get the Master of Business Administration degree, and Cornell is a prestigious university to get that from. Uh, Cornell's connections around the world are amazing, and especially in New York City are amazing, and that's where I was working after I graduated from Cornell. So my idea was to propel myself higher in my corporate job, Although now as I'm reinvented as a writer, I see that from both Dartmouth College and Cornell University, I um, did great work developing myself as a writer. I, I find that when I read things that other people have written, that uh, a lot of people make a lot of mistakes when they're writing. They don't write the strongest thing which they could, and they uh, write things in you could say circular ways or indirect ways that they they don't achieve the message as well as they could. But something which I really liked in the Ivy Leagues, I think they're very tough about this at Cornell and Dartmouth for sure, is developing yourself as a writer, that you should be able to write beautifully and you should be able to write directly and really communicate your message as well. So you have answered to the question about um, how uh, your education help you in building your career. And uh, do you have teaching experience? Uh, do you teach to write? Well, something interesting which has happened to me in this uh, past year and a half since I've been marketing this KGB Banker book is a few other authors have been interested to write thriller novels that are along the same lines of what uh, what I've written. Um, one thing is uh, lessons to me come from my co-author, my co-author, William Burton McCormick on KGB Banker. He was educated at Brown University, which is another Ivy League university. He's a brilliant writer. So I learned a lot working together with him on the novel. And then I've had three people in the past uh, year who all wanted help from me to write their novels, that they all wanted to write thriller novels. Uh, I mean, they'd all written other things before, so all of them were accomplished already, but where we had a uh, sharing of ideas of developing uh, more thriller novels. And I, I find that, uh, yeah, some of this writing ability comes from my earlier Ivy League education, but some of it also comes from things I've learned since then, like working with the co-author, now working with these three uh, other authors to help them with their books. Also some uh, philosophical things that I've read about writing because I, I make a point to find books that other people have written that are widely respected about, uh, for example, theory on how to write a novel. Yeah, thank you very much. Also, I think you can uh, tell maybe in one uh, sentence about what is the difference between academic and literal style? 
Well, an academic style is showing evidence and arguments and mm -hmm. uh, trying to prove something to say that uh, I looked at this evidence and I interpret this evidence in this way and this is the conclusion that I come to. Writing a fictional novel is is a different thing. It's an art, and the purpose of it is much debated. Like, what is the purpose of writing something which is about imaginary people who did imaginary things? Like, why does anybody need to read that? Or what's the point of even writing something which is imaginary? Mm -hmm. um, thousands of years ago, I don't know that humans would have been doing this, although they say people were telling stories and legends around the campfire. So maybe it is is an art that comes goes way, very far back into the human experience. But um, the, the thoughts on how to do it now about the classic three-act structure, for example, this is something that a lot of novelists and uh, playwrights as well use. We use this for KGB Banker. Also, uh, philosophically, something I put in was this concept that uh, well, there should be a protagonist and an antagonist. So the protagonist or the good guy in the story is fighting against the antagonist, who's the bad guy. And it sets up two sets of values where the, pro the protagonist believes in certain things. For example, a common one, which, which is, in fact, in my novel, is truth. That the protagonist believes that people should tell the truth and that the truth should be exposed. Whereas the antagonist thinks that it's only for fools telling the truth and that uh, actually everybody should be lying and hiding things. And when they have a final battle at the end of the book and uh, presumably the protagonist would win and the antagonist would lose at the ending, it, it serves as sort of a proof of a morality or an ethic where uh, you show through the writing that the protagonist who is telling the truth, he won, and the antagonist who was telling lies, he lost. So this is what you're trying to create in a novel, some kind of moral, they say in America, a moral to the story where, where you illustrate through the fictional writing that uh, what's correct behavior and what's incorrect behavior. That's, that's one way to do it, uh, which I believe in. My pleasure for your answer. I think it is a full, great answer to this question. And so, um, do you consider a PhD program in your future? If yes, what is your potential research about? Well, if I, it's been suggested to me for years that maybe I should get a PhD and go into teaching. I, I most likely would do that in economics rather than in writing. Uh, I, I suppose I could do it either way, but um, my inclination is to just focus on writing. I have a few more books that I would like to write in the future. And uh, about becoming a teacher, I, I have done some uh, university lecturing actually in the field of economics, not in the field of writing. And I see something nice about that, but I don't want to make it my career, so I'm not going to get a PhD. Uh, thank you for your answer. Um, how is your book, KGB Banker, related to your education and career? You have talked already about it, but could you maybe summarize something? Well, the actual experience that the novel is based on, in a way, was me getting taken advantage of by uh, because of my fancy education. I was hired to work for this uh bank, which turned out to be a criminal bank, but they didn't say that in the beginning. And what they wanted was a international representative for their bank to convince other people at other banks in other countries that they could trust our bank and depend on our bank. And I think the reason why they chose me to be like the front man for the bank was uh because I can speak well and because I'm Western and I, I can make people comfortable about what this bank, I mean, the bank was in Latvia, but uh, anyway, the idea was that I had the right personality, perhaps partly because I'm a Westerner from the Ivy League, that I could go around and meet with other banks and convince them that everything at our bank was good. So you could say I was uh framed up <laughs> because of the fact that I had a good education um 
Yeah, so that that would be how uh, my education affected this. I mean, also my uh, co-author who studied at Brown, uh, he studied writing specifically. Writing has always been his love. So I was studying economics while he was studying writing. Um, so you could say he was more directly influenced by his education. And with me, I had more an intention in the beginning just to be a businessman. And then the writing is like a second career for me. Yeah, great experience. Um, uh, if master's and PhD students could be considered as a target audience to read your book, what is the main reason to read it and what helpful they can find in your book? We put certain important themes into the book. Um, one one goal with the book was to make it entertaining as a thriller. So there there are uh, financial scandals that are going on in the book. There are uh, dangerous villains who you know uh, murderers in the book. There's there's also romantic things, uh, dangerous beautiful women who are seducing the characters. I mean, there are elements of entertainment in the book. The more serious issues would be about perhaps the future of the global financial system, where there is a big problem these days that a lot of institutions are not reliable anymore, uh, governments and auditors and ratings agencies. Uh, uh, there seems to have been some kind of a breakdown where there are gigantic frauds all the time discovered around the world that uh, could have been caught earlier. And, and one uh Part of this, which is specifically where we are, is with the issue of a whistleblower where somebody inside an organization finds out that the organization is doing something illegal and tells everybody about it. And this, uh, the, the mainstream human reaction to this is backward because most people, rather than embrace a whistleblowing to learn something and to correct the problem, most people have the reaction of, uh, trying to cover up whatever the information is. And when you learn about a crime and you cover up the information rather than using the information to stop the crime, normally what happens is the crime gets much larger. Uh, which brings to the last uh, part of the themes here are the importance of free media and journalism, because uh, there are certain characters in the book who are in the media journalists. And uh, the, the work of journalists, investigative journalists, people who don't just publish whatever you want to hear, but they really investigate and they find out what's going on and they publish the truth of what's going on, that these people are very important for society. So we've, we've put journalists in an important light in the book. So all of these are important themes, but it's all within a package where there's like an action and adventure and romance story. And inside of that are the themes. Uh, John, thank you very much for your answers. And let's uh, go to read KGB Banker because I think it's very interesting and helpful <laughs> to, to learn, to analyze as an academic this book. Thank you, Alexandra. You have a wonderful program and I'm honored to be invited. Thank you, John. Have a nice day. Nice day. KGBbanker.com.